Uh, so yeah. That happened. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex TV. It's I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Josh. It's so juicy. How's the Josh? I'm sorry. My you voice. actually Corbinize it because it's Josh. Ah, uh, whatever. Hi, sir. Good. <laughs> Jai Hin. Jai Hin. Uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty freaking high after that. Yeah, so uh, obviously, if you haven't seen it, I'm hoping you all saw it. Uh, we got to, we got the pleasure of interviewing, um, the, I can't pronounce the, the, you name, but the Ustadji. maestro, basically. Yeah. Maestro, right? Ustad, and then Ustadji is Sir Maestro. Uh, yeah. Ustadji is Uh, and the, the reception to it was incredible. And it was the exact reception we were, we were wanting. hoping for. That's why uh, we kept it a secret. I've, so people asked about, uh, how it happened. And our, uh, they wanted us to talk about the interview as well, and we also got to see him in concert after that. Yes. So um, Rick did a little a thing on his channel. If you haven't seen that, go go watch you that, can watch that uh, over there. Uh, but uh, since, and we know that ninety nine percent of you aren't on my channel over there, so, so we need to do this here. Want to do a little one here <laughs> uh, and give a little of uh, my insight. But uh, and by the way, let's just point out the ridiculousness of the fact that the very first interview we do on the channel is that legend yeah we yeah. are well aware we we i've been working on a, of this. a few interviews with different people of different degrees of uh celebrity if you were right uh and some fall through some just don't happen some are still in the process all of this one has been in process honestly since our first reaction to him mm -hmm. uh after horse running that uh, video we did that blew, uh, our minds. that blew our minds. I looked up because I wanted one to see him in concert because yeah. really this is amazing. Uh, but also I was like, if we can have the opportunity to do a Skype interview with this guy, that would be amazing. Uh, so I contacted uh, some of his people, uh, and sometimes I was really not expecting actually to hear back, right? Honestly, because that's right. you know I, I contact like I've contacted Priyanka's people and like not expecting to hear back from them a but you know you just do you it just know. in case yeah uh, <laughs> you, you know you're gonna get as zero response if you don't do a thing yes so at least you have a percentage yeah. of hope by doing something so i i, I emailed them and then they got back to me uh, and said uh, I, i've talked to him he would love to because we found out he i was actually he lives in san francisco and he's doing a tour currently in the United States. Right. And there's multiple areas outside of Los Angeles that he's in. And so he was Santa Barbara and he was like, Wh which area would you want to meet him in? And I was like, oh, meet him. Because uh, yeah. I was expecting like a 15 minute Skype interview. <laughs> And, and they, they presumed we met a one-on-one. -on -one, so yeah, it, thanks for that. Thank presumption. you so much. <laughs> uh, but so I was like, Santa Barbara is probably the the closest oh, to crap. us. I just thought of something. Do you think now they're just going to get inundated with requests for interview? I mean, I know he already is inundated, but do you think that now there's going to? Well, be I didn't tell him exactly who I contacted. There's many, right. There's many many people. places. It wasn't can... it wasn't him. I didn't yeah. contact Zakir. Mm. <laughs> anyway, um, anyway, but. Uh, so I contact him and this, like I said, has been in the works. We didn't know a definitive answer until about two weeks ago. I, it was, it was mostly, well, I think this is going to happen. Yeah. You had said to me something pretty cool. First of all, we knew he was in concert and we were going to go to the concert. That was a foregone conclusion. Yeah. I had when, tickets. when Corbin told me we have something pretty cool, that's going to, I've actually, his people have said he would do an interview with us and I was like, what? And and we both were like, that's not gonna happen. But that's really sweet of him yeah. to reply. It's like, uh, that's very sweet. If it happens, it's hopefully it's like a Skype. Yeah. Um, or maybe a phone call. Mm -hmm. Anyway, continue. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, uh, it didn't. We didn't know definitively. He was like, well, we're pretty sure this is gonna happen. He wants to do it. Um, and all okay, that. Really? Does he? Does and he, he said, know who we are. He told me after <laughs> I think the fifth or something like that. Um, he'll have a definitive answer. Right. And so he contacted me. He said, all right, you will have um, this a lot amount of time, 30 minutes. Which please, we were like, please stick to your time because he has a busy schedule. So that's why the interview is 30 minutes. 
We timed it to make sure it was exactly, we didn't want to take any more. not be named was on the counter. We didn't want to uh, spend any more time than we were allowed. Correct. Uh, he's a very busy man. And so that was very generous of them to allow us to do that. 30 minutes. Uh, and then, I, Really, I thought it was going to be like just a five minute. Yeah. Allow us to express our appreciation, say something to the stupid babies. That would have been mind boggling. <laughs> uh, but so we got there uh, really early uh, and we thought we were going to, because you have to take it up with the venue and him and his people to where you can interview. Right. The venue didn't have an adequate place to do it, so we thought we were gonna do it in his tour bus. Yeah, when we got there, that's what we thought. We were told, go to the tour bus. We found the tour bus. We arrived really early and walked around the campus, and then Corbin had been instructed to let them know we're here right at 525. So at 524, we're standing there, the three of us, he's got his phone. 525. <laughs> yep. Yep. On the bunny. Uh, and then we, so, it, it didn't end up, it's the, the venue people actually ended up putting us in this dressing room. As you saw in the interview. As you saw, which wasn't the prettiest room. <laughs> no, when we, we walked into that room, I'm like, yeah, one, not, I, not for us, for him, I'm like, yeah, we're, we're interviewing this legend in this dank little, yeah. there was like a trash bin behind us that I moved, because like, there's no way I'm allowing a trash can in the background There's a of an interview with Microwave, microwave behind yeah, my Microwave, head. doors opening up and weird lighting in there, and as you saw, it was really But, tight. you know, that's where we were put, and yeah. obviously we're not going to complain. Nope. <laughs> we'll do whatever um, he so, said. So that's why it was there and not in a prettier setting. But, you know, I was actually, in, in retrospect to talking about this, uh, as far as I was talking to Andrani about this, how... As, as I really felt almost disrespectful for the area we were in with him and wanted it to be better. But it added, when you watched the interview, the, the knee-to-knee aspect and no table and his ability to touch your leg and fist bump us and his, his really connecting with us, I felt like the intimacy of that space, even though it felt like, I hope this is okay, mm -hmm. I think it helped contribute to that sense of familial, relational which was all him. Oh yeah. I mean, we, we went in and sat, you can tell from our body posture at the beginning, we, it wasn't so much uh, nervousness yeah. as much as it was wanting to be as respectful and allow him to determine the atmosphere. We did not want to become too friendly before he allowed us to be friendly. Yeah, because normally I don't, I don't sit up like this no. normally at all. I'm, 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 I have terrible posture. I normally sit like this. Yeah, laid back. Videos. Yeah. And, but you know, it's, it's something yet you, you, he's such a high stature person. He, he deserves that level. Not, not he doesn't give that off as, as, as a all. person. Which is why you watch, if you watch our body language, we start to particularly, uh, I purposefully mirror his body language mm -hmm. uh, and allow him to dictate the comfort level and no way presume I can be comfortable with him before he gives me permission to be comfortable. Yeah. And his, uh, I mean, immediately he was oh, yeah. handshaking, making jokes. making jokes, touching Corbin on the leg, uh, making I, fun, fist, bump, fist bumping. I still haven't washed his hands since Saturday. <laughs> Gone to the bathroom numerous times. Numerous, numerous times. <laughs> and even, even, you know, his, his body posture and feeling comfortable enough to cross, cross legs and talk that way. So yeah, yeah, uh, he's, he's absolute delight. And, and and during the interview, like like you were talking about, he is like probably one of the sweetest people I've ever met, and also one of the easiest people to talk to I've ever met. Oh, easy, which yeah. is crazy, you know, because he is the tabla, right? Like, <laughs> there's not he's a per living legend. He's a, a household name in India and around the world. Sadly, not here, um, but uh, he should be, uh, yeah. uh, and he is to us, and so he, he has that satchel, but he, he was so kind, generous, he, like you said in your video, he, he, you never got the vibe, because sometimes interviews you can tell that they're there and they don't really want to be there, or they're, right. they're like, I got stuff to I got do. Stuff to do. I mean, he's, got a he's a busy that, man. He's got concert that night, uh, you know, he may, want, he may have a certain pattern to what he does, not he was so fully engaged with us mm -hmm. and totally focused on us mm -hmm. the whole time even i said this in my video at the end we went out to go take a picture and he beat us to the door mm -hmm. and held the door for us and i'm literally like no way that's yeah. happening yeah. Things and right he now. died, no, and let us go out. So then I turned and held the door for him, and he said, thank you. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so he was extremely, extremely generous. Uh, we thank you so much, Shakir. That was Ugh. one of the most incredible experiences of my life. 
Yeah. Uh, we, we said that at yeah. dinner. We, we were sitting down at dinner after. We had time from the interview to the concert to go grab something to eat. And uh, Stephanie and Corbin and I are sitting there talking and we're like, that just happened. And Corbin took the words out of my mouth. He said, I'll never forget this the rest of my life. Like one of the highlight moments of my life. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And the fact that he's one of my, the way I relate to people and uh, bond with people and my family as well is like, we make fun of each other. Yeah. Like all the time. And so yes. the fact that he did that, like the dead, the the de dead, the dead stare, stare was, was absolutely incredible. Legendary. Like we're like, oh yeah, Joe, a uh, Corbin Myers. That's yeah, Corbin Myers. Myers. just... <laughs> Yes. Oh, that was amazing. Oh. And he did it numerous times. And I, I, like, he did it right at the beginning when I said to him, you know, we're embarrassed to admit that we've just recently discovered you. He said, oh, I still haven't discovered myself. Something of <laughs> that nature. Uh, and yeah. then, like, I'm not a musician. He's like, yeah, we can't all be perfect. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. He's so funny. Like, everything you saw in there and more, like, he started it off with joke after joke after joke right when he met us immediately wanted to put us at ease uh was... he's, so he's so so sweet and then we got the absolute honor of seeing him in concert after that yeah it's about two hours after uh... yeah and we got to see even the pre we walked up uh, i mentioned this on my channel as well we we saw the setup that they had for and it was it was it was him and three other legends instrumentally who were doing uh, banjo, double bass, and flute. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, and the setup was there, and there was uh, the maestro's setup with his tabla and the covers on them. And it was just an auspicious thing to be able to stand and see his setup. And I was mindful, I'm sure you were, looking at the little covers. We talked about that, the covers he had on the instruments. Yeah. And how one of the most profound things he said was when I asked him about being a master of his instrument, he immediately corrected me in a gracious way and said, in no way, shape, or form do you master the instrument. It's a relationship that the, the, the spirit of the instrument allows you. And he said that at one point. He said, yeah. if, if the tablet doesn't want me to play it, I'm gone. Yeah. And there's a level of respect for the instrument that is not a domination of it in any way, shape, or form. There's so much respect for it. Like oh. it, Before he ever gets up to play his tabla in his little... The little um, forgive us if there's a proper term for it. Stand. It's a raised up platform, platform. with what with is, appears to be a really nice carpet or blanket. Yeah. And he comes with. I'm sure there's a right terminology for the kind of shawl scarf, scarf thing, thing he has. Yeah. And then he he yeah. What, Every time he yeah. touches where before he steps up, he touches it and then touches his forehead and like his chest and back up. It's clearly a reverential place of where I'm coming. I've been gifted to be, and I'm stewarding this. It's just. Everything about the man is nothing but sheer humility, stewardship, thankfulness, gratitude, but, and joy. Yeah, yes, and, that's the guy. And as you'd expect, the concert was one of the best concerts I've ever been to. Unbelievable. Like, it, it, it was, an, and also the audience, I, it, it was weird because we, that's not what we were expecting, but no. it makes sense because the two other people that were the most well known to, I think most of the people in there were um, Bobby, uh, 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 wait, we should, Edgar Meyer, Edgar Meyer, and, uh, Ed Edgar Meyer played the uh, double bass, correct? Yes. And then banjo was. Uh, I, don't, okay. I don't like that we're study ex stuttering on this. We should. Uh, I will figure it out because they're they're every single one of these people is a legend on their. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure that one out. But uh, instrument. there was a Kier Hussein, and then there was a guy on banjo, and then there was um, which we didn't know about. It was a surprise. It wasn't even on the uh, the. Pamphlet. No, it wasn't. It, the, they were. It was advertised with the three. The three of them. And then but, out came Rakesh Charesia, if I'm we're pronouncing his playing name correct. The flute or right. whatever that instrument Who was. We have reacted we, to. We reacted to Zakir and his video together. We had no idea. Uh, but so we also got that honor to be able to yeah. and he was incredible. And they also did that thing that they do in the videos often where they do the, the sparring basically. Mm -hmm. They they mimic each other. Yeah. And so that was incredible. The concert he was mind blowing. And the audience was ninety nine percent old white people yep and santa barbara population yeah it's a, it's a really rich area very very wealthy uh, uh stereotypical white american yeah uh going out to see classical music and the, there was a lady behind us who i talked about this on my channel as well who saw us taking pictures before mm -hmm. and she asked us why we were taking the pictures and i got to explain who we were who the channel was she asked more questions and i told her what you're about to see because she had no clue 
who and that's probably the, most people. In most there. people who's a kicker. There were many of them who were probably there because I believe the the gentleman playing. Uh, I I'm pissed off right now. I'll get not get sick. Go keep talking. I'll get it. Uh, the double bass and banjo. There were a lot of people there for them. Because they know them by reason of them being American instrumentalists. Uh, Bella Fleck. Bella Fleck, thank you. And Edgar, uh, Edgar Meyer. Yeah. So Bella Fleck and Edgar Meyer. And most people were there to see them on double bass and banjo. Which, let's just talk about them for a split second. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the best. I didn't even mention. I, I wanted to say to you, it's some, his, I've not heard anybody use a bow in such flu flawless. It was like there was no bow. Because he was doing this most of the time, and then he would just randomly pick it up and go Vroom. Yeah, but there, I couldn't hear the bow strings. Yeah. I couldn't hear an attack or a, or a decay. It was just this, it just was sound emanating from it. And let's talk about next level jazz. Okay, so um, there's this incredible jazz band called Open Hands. And I happen to know a couple of guys in the band, particularly Bill Maxwell, who plays the drums, who's a drumming legend. And I've seen Open Hands many times at a great place here called The Baked Potato. Incredible, long history there. And they're about as good as it gets in jazz. And it, it, they are. They're, they're like spellbindingly, oh my goodness. There were things that these four men were doing from memory I've not seen. Mm -hmm. Changes in meter. Uh, improvisational things, connectivity with the way they're doing things. Uh, I just, it was, it was the highest level of musicianship you could possibly watch. And it was fun to dust with the three of us leaning forward spellbound and just see stuff and turn to each other and go, like, and in one, front of us, one, people were. One of the <laughs> coolest things was whenever, obviously, obviously a lot of them were, they did mesmerizing things, um, but whenever Zakir did what Zakir does, right? you saw, all these heads that just turn to each other and go, what, what is... Up? <laughs> yeah, because they didn't know. Yeah. You have no one, they probably never heard it, of this instrument, ever heard right. anybody play this instrument, also, obviously, at that level. At that level. Because, you know, there's nobody else. <laughs> they've, yeah, they experienced something they've never experienced. Which that, was great, which is cool to see, because that's what the whole yeah. part of this channel is about. Yeah. And so it was great to see this sea of white people. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Just get to experience this amazing man and his gift and yeah. the Indian culture. And it was a beautiful, I, I waxed eloquent on this when I was talking about it on my channel, mm -hmm. it, to see the blending of what are definitively, you have a definitively Western, even though its origins, as we learned from the maestro, is the banjo is from Africa. Crazy. The he, banjo is definitively an American instrument in terms of country and bluegrass. He, I mean, taught, he taught me more in 30 minutes than you ever did in high school. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> I do not. I do not discount that statement in any way. <laughs> totally affirm that. I mean, it might be my fault, but whatever. <laughs> That's not your <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and so you have this definitively American instrument in the banjo, and then a definitively classical instrument in the double bass. Mm -hmm. And then you have the world music of that flute sound that was being played. It was like a, a butterfly. It, it really was. And to see the blending, it was so interesting to hear tabla, double bass, and banjo. And then flute added to it, and it all oh, was seamless. and it worked in a jazzy format. Yeah, unlike anything I've ever experienced, it it really was mind-boggling musicianship, the yeah. highest level of musicianship you could possibly watch. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. The whole experience and that whole day for us was insane, Crazy. as you're about to see, because this is the first video we're dropping today. Right after this, we hit five hundred thousand. Thank you so much. Yes, it's and this, by the way. This wasn't our 500k no. celebration video. This is probably bigger than our 500k. Way bigger! <laughs> like, so I'm it probably could have been. I'm hoping it's not a letdown. A letdown, you. right. But we've got another thing for you for the 500k celebration. Yeah. Uh, and that we did that morning. Yeah, so we... So <laughs> it's a big weekend. 8 a.m. we filmed that. And <laughs> we were in the studio one. from 8 to 1 filming. And then at 3.30... We had about a two and a half hour break. Hour. Yeah, we had a two and a half hour break to then drove an hour and a half to half. Santa Barbara. Yeah, did a thirty minute interview and then we're there until what ten? We left at ten thirty. Yeah, we got back a little after. Got home at midnight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then he spent all day after that doing nothing but editing. Uh, the 500k celebration. So video. I'm hoping you'll enjoy that as yeah, well. Yeah, I hope it's not. But a big obviously, <laughs> it's, it's, it's 
a big week and we thank you all so much. We thank Zakir Hussein, his people, uh, and the, truly, truly humbled. Thank the, you. The blessing to listen to all those masters be able to play was an incredible experience. And thank you guys for introducing to us because obviously if you didn't, this would have never, never happened because we would still not know. Like everything on this here, channel, if it wasn't this. for the stupid babies, it, it, so, wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened. I so, hope you enjoyed a little bit of the background uh, of it, and uh, thank and you I, guys so much. I guess for our next interview, we can do something small like Big B. I still don't think Big B will ever come. <laughs> <laughs> you said that about Zakir! You said that about Zakir!